For those who love music, Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto is an inspirational piece, something that moves us to do many things, laugh, cry, smile, and for our next guest, it moved him to make a film. Welcome, Paul Festa. Thank you. So the name of the film is Tie It Into My Hand. Tell me about the, the source of the, the title of the film and what's it about? Well, the, the title comes from uh, an introduction to new poems by E.E. E. Cummings, a collection that came out in 1938. And in the introduction, he talks about the man who, when his fingers would not hold a brush, told those near him, tie it into my hand. Mm -hmm. um, it's apparently a reference to Renoir, right. um, who was so arthritic at the end that that, that was the only way he could paint. Um, and I went through something similar at a much younger age because of a nerve problem in, in my left hand. And you were uh, a young a young time. violinist here in San Francisco. I was studying at the conservatory and I was in the youth orchestra. Um, and I was touring as soloist with the California Youth Symphony when I started having these problems in my left hand, which never really went away. Um, it, it didn't keep me from playing altogether, but it compromised my mm -hmm. ability to practice and right. to rehearse. Now, you say that it never really quite went away. Do you still have this pain? Because you still play. I do, and it's, it's, it's more of a, a question of weakness than it is pain. Once right. it's gotten to pain, then I'm finished. Right. But it can prevent me from executing a run or mm -hmm. it can screw up a trill or something. And so it brings down the whole quality. But mostly what it does is it prevents you from practicing four hours a day, which is really what you should have to play the Tchaikovsky right. Concerto. Yeah. So now you were uh, a young violinist. Was it because of this injury that you started exploring the realm of filmmaking? It was, but, but, but weirdly, it, was, it wasn't, I didn't get into film until 10 or 15 years after the, um, until after the injury set mm -hmm. in. Uh, the filmmaking actually came, you know, I, I sort of have come to the realization that I went to film school at Juilliard. I had this chamber <laughs> music professor there, a guy named Albert Fuller, who, um, if anyone who's seen the movie All That Jazz has been in his apartment, because that's where they shot it. And we, he had a concert series in that, in that apartment, and it's where we stayed up really late listening to music after a coaching, and he would start narrating what was going on in his imagination. So we'd be listening to a Schubert string quintet, and, and suddenly an opera would unfold, or a ballet, or, or just a narrative story that he would tell. And that was the best show in New York. Right. And essentially, all of the work that I've done in film has been on some variation of that experience. So he was a mentor on many levels. Now, this particular film is, um, draws its name from the Cummings uh, poem, the intro, I should say, and it is based on a number of rehearsals of Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto. Who are the people in rehearsal that we see in this film? Well, it, it, the way that I constructed the film was uh, I wanted to say um, something about my own story. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say something more broad about the artist's life generally. And I also wanted to say something about the mentor-student relationship. Albert Fuller, who I mentioned, gave me the inspiration to make my first film, which was called Apparition of the Eternal Church. Um, he died in 2007. I lost a, another great mentor a couple years before that, George Dushek, who was on TV mm -hmm. here in San Francisco for many years on KQED. Uh, and then two years later, another one. And at the, at, on the heels of losing three great mentors in four years, I felt orphaned creatively and personally in a way. Mm -hmm. And I felt that the, the film, the project, had to embody that relationship in somehow. So what I've done is I've gone around to a group of about 120 artists and I've taken a lesson with them. They are teaching me to play the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. But the trick is that none of them are violins. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I saw one of the clips and you have Carrie Perloff, the uh, artistic director of American Conservatory Theater, and I thought, I. I don't recall Carrie Perloff being a violinist. She happens to be a great violin teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that was the idea. I mean, you know, because I said I went to film school at Juilliard. No one goes to Juilliard for film yes. school, but I got such a great education and such a great foundation for attaching story and, and image to music um, from a harpsichordist. Mm -hmm. And so, well, why not learn how to play the violin from a theater director or right. see what happens in that transit between disciplines, between arts? And, and the results were, were really So you think that there amazing. is a connection between the artists. So a, a pianist can teach a film student, or a harpsichordist can uh, teach a TV producer or Absolutely. a writer. Absolutely. It worked much more often than it didn't work. In fact, uh -huh. it almost never didn't work at all. It sounds like an interesting take on the master class sort of thing. I think, yeah, you know, essentially I created my own, my own music school. Mm -hmm. I went back to music school and I created the faculty, and the faculty were 
you know, I mean, it was pe actors like Alan Cumming and Peter Coyote and Mink Stoll gave mm -hmm. a wonderful lesson. <laughs> she was terrific. Did you get John Waters in there as well? I, I mean, haven't, uh, but I'm Mink trying. Stoll, yeah, he lives in San Francisco. <laughs> I, I got his number, so yeah. yeah. Um, why Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto? I've just been obsessed with that piece since, weirdly, since my wedding night, mm -hmm. um, where I just started going through it in my head and uh, experiencing it in a way that I, I never had. When I played it when I was 15, I, I didn't really understand camp. I didn't mm -hmm. really understand what, um, that kind of, um, what that kind of excess meant in yeah, it's, music. It's big. It's bigger than big. I mean, it's bigger, I mean Tchaikovsky's so over the big, top. but it's, it's over the top Tchaikovsky. It really is. You, you, you just follow it. And if you follow it in the right frame of mind and you just go from episode to episode, it's like, I can't believe he's he's going to try to amp it up even more. It's like you're not even finished, and he keeps taking it higher. It's extremely erotic, mm -hmm. and which is maybe why I came up with it on my on my wedding night. Uh -huh. But um, but you know, since then I became obsessed with like getting back into the piece and getting it under my fingers. And it's a lot of notes for someone who can't practice for two hour, even two hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, but over the course of the last eighteen months, I've gotten a handle on it, and we're going to play the whole thing at ODC on September twenty first and twenty second. Uh, one of the films that I, the film that I made before this is called The Glitter Emergency, um, and it's set to the second two movements of the Tchaikovsky Concerto, the second half of the piece. Um, and it's the story of a peg leg ballerina who fights her way back to the stage, starring Ma uh, Peggy Legs, or Matthew Simmons, a, a wonderful drag performer here in San Francisco. Who were involved with the, uh, the Coquettes, correct? Uh, Matthew uh, was a tranny shack fixture, uh -huh. tranny shack royalty, I should say. Um, and in fact, he just was got an honorable mention for Best Actress at the <laughs> Los downtown Los Angeles Film Festival right. uh, for his turn in glitter. Uh, the co uh, Rumi of the Coquettes plays one of the depraved evil stepsisters. Mm -hmm. And there are also members of the San Francisco Ballet in the film who dance wonderfully. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll screen Glitter Emergency, we'll show Tie It Into My Hand, and we'll also play the first movement of the Tchaikovsky Concerto along with a kind of storyboard showing what the third film in this Tchaikovsky series. Yeah, it, Tchaikovsky it sounds like Shriptic. a tight rope walking sort of performance night. Are you worried that your injury is going to come up? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, so what happens? I mean, is it like you know, watching an Olympian who suddenly uh, uh, sprains something during a gymnastic routine and they still land and then they scream in pain after they nail it? I mean, no, it's no, it's, it's not trying it's, to scare you. No, I just no, no, wonder. no, no. It's really more of a kind of mild sense of embarrassment because I'm not going to get up there and you know. I, I mean, first of all, I think it's going to be fine. I've actually learned a lot of things just in the last few years about how to make it better. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't bore you with the details now, but it's but I'm sign in significantly better shape now than I was even when I was at Juilliard, mm -hmm. and that may also have to do with not being in a pressure cooker kind of environment. Right. Um, right. So it's going to be great. Yeah, and you're not worried. I'm not worried. So are you tired of hearing this concerto now? You I mean, know, you must have heard it a lot over the last year and a half of making this film. You know, the, the very funny thing is that I'm that you w when you're learning a piece like this, I don't listen to recordings of this music. Um, the last time I heard it live was in the Hollywood Bowl with 60,000 people, and it was amplified, and people were applauding in the middle of the movements. I mean, it was fabulous. It was, ama it was an amazing mm -hmm. performance, and it was really stirring, and it really got my blood going. Mm -hmm. um, but I never listened to it. I, I, just, I just try to come up with my own interpretation and try to nail it on my, yeah. on my own. Who is the most interesting of the 160 interviews? I know that's hard, but you know something that made you like go, wow, I didn't expect that, like Mink Stoll. What can Mink Stoll teach you about the... Oh, Mink was, Mink was wonderful, and she's had s such a, a, a rich and varied and kind of hard scrabble, but also glorious career as an artist and she like me has had a big career change you know she went from um, from being a, a film actress to starting a cabaret act and doing a lot of singing yeah. and developing her voice that way so uh, in, um, it, Mink was wonderful there was nothing uh, there, she wasn't especially weird I mean there were some definite weird moments in the in the film um, you know I mean, you would ex you would expect one of John Waters classic iconic actresses like Mink Stoll to give you something weird and wonderful it was all wonderful but just wasn't that weird the weird stuff came from the choreographer who had me pee into a bucket while I played the exposition as a way of letting go of tension. <laughs> it's, I mean, try, try, I recommend that you do try this at home because it, it, it's just, you know, when you're, when you're battling 
tension in your hands and in yes. your upper body, if you, ha if you have to concentrate on letting everything go, uh -huh. there's no better way than... Did you use that method ladder. again? I mean, after you tried it that first no, time? No, once was enough. <laughs> but you captured it on a film. It's on film. But it's a G-rated film, so there's nothing that's we have because, to be worried about. No, that's because the camera's on the teacher. I got the it. The camera's never on me. I got it. So, so, I got the, it. so we don't see you in the film? You will see me on the film. Those are... Um, but, but you will not see me very much in the interviews. There were a few, uh, the, a pioneering lesbian filmmaker, uh, Barbara Hammer, said, Yes, get you out. Come in front. Well, we're going to see in the film, but in just a second, we're actually going to hear you play some of Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto. Thanks for watching. I'm David Perry, and we'll hear Paul in just a moment.